care even a little bit about this country, you will find the king and you will kill him. Hello, welcome back to Frank's Penance. At the moment, Frank is just heading into Mike's bar because I need to see if there's anything worth doing around here, whether my friends have any missions for me. Let's see what this hey man, first guy wants. I am pissed. Guess what I just found out. You know how most of the guys like us buy their gas at the fishing village? Turns out those gas station assholes are taking the money they make and giving it to the factions, who then try to screw us. This fuel station's got to go. You want the job? So he wants me to blow up some fuel station that's been messing around with some of these guys, but I wasn't really interested in that. That isn't the sort of thing that Frank would really want to be doing, so I decided to I see what to Flora ask. had to offer instead. There's a convoy of trucks passing through today, carrying new furniture for Buentwe's mansion. Can you believe that? His people starve in the street and he buys gold-plated dishes. It's obscene. I would destroy the convoy myself if I could, but I have to meet the contact here in an hour. You do the job for me. Again, Flora's offer isn't particularly enticing. She wants me to blow up one of the faction leader's furniture. It's just not the sort of thing that I think Frank would want to be doing or that he would be doing in this sort of situation. So I'm going to let Flora attempt to find someone else to do her dirty work or perhaps you can just cancel her meeting with this contact. And uh, this guy, whose name I still don't know, can continue paying uh, <laughs> prices for his gas that he does not agree with and we're not going to murder anyone as a result. So sorry guys, I'm going to head back to town and see if the factions have any more worthwhile work for me. So in town I'm heading over to the UFLL headquarters yet again, I'm going to give up my weapons to the guards, head inside and see if the faction leaders are discussing anything of interest as they always seem to be when I go in and see if I can get myself some work. Of course this work may bring me closer to the jackal which is the whole objective in this so let's see what's going on. They say all of you are going to leave the country. Just a bunch of lies, don't believe everything you hear. Pay us to do a job eh, we gotta do it. The money brought past into Africa. No more money, no more PMC. Well then keep the ducats coming and you won't have a problem. Yes of course, that is what matters. Not the work, not the effort to build a strong Africa. Oh, is that what you're doing? Then realize China, when you send your boys off to do your dirty work, even scores, and then hire mercs when the soldier supply runs low. You reckon that's making things better, do you? You're good at your job, better than the other men I've hired. The UFL is getting very strong thanks to you. That's good. What Dr. Kagumba is trying to tell you is that we've got a job and we're looking for a freelancer to take it. Someone like you, China. The APR is providing security for some European agribusiness. You know the type. Blokes in three-piece suits eager to try some funny business with the local ecosystem and no complaints. So APR soldiers guard the farms and in exchange the company gives them all the rabbit food they can eat. We would like you to put a stop to this treachery. The company farm is in the foothills east of town. There's a shed in there between two greenhouses. It houses the irrigation pumps. You figure out a way to destroy them. Then the scientists would understand that the APR cannot offer protection to anybody. If you can do that job, that is. You get the gist, eh? Go to the greenhouse complex, find the shed with all the pipes, take it out. Payment in stones. Same as always. You're on your own here, China. Don't expect any friendly faces out there, even from us. So that's the mission. It looks like we're supposed to head out and take out the greenhouse that's being operated by some suspicious agro-business complex which is supposedly damaging the local ecosystem. Seems like a good cause and certainly a better cause than what my buddies were offering me. So this sounds like a good mission. Let's get started. The actual site of the greenhouses is quite far away so I'm going to have to go on a fairly long journey. And of course Flora is going to have better ideas so let's see what she says when she calls me. Well, she didn't divulge many details there, so it seems I'm going to have to head south to meet her. She's on a little hut beside the river, so I decided I'm going to take water transportation to get there. So let's head over and see what Flora is thinking about this particular mission. I was held in captivity for a few weeks, and during the frequent interviews I was subjected to, I eventually found out what Fergal had done. For the first few hours I didn't know what to feel. I guess my emotional clock was changing from sad to angry and going past neutral in between. Soon enough I was a 17 year old ball of rage unable to sleep or sit in my tiny holding cell. The upside of it all was that when the police asked me to divulge information on my cell, I didn't hesitate for a second 
and bought myself some sympathy from the system that probably halved my eventual sentence. I told them everything they wanted to know that I could provide and, unlike the me of a few weeks prior, I felt no sense of disloyalty or shame for doing it. The IRA had betrayed me, that's all I could see, so to help their enemies was the least I could do. I almost forgot that the police were my enemies too, until the day came when I was dragged before a court. I was charged with the attempted bombing and the tirade of other crimes I admitted to. Fate spared me the true wrath of the system by arranging so that all but one of the people I had attacked during that checkpoint raid disaster had survived. The one that had died was spun as a military casualty since I was part of a group that at least called itself an army at the time. The jury didn't like it, but the judge was quite insistent to them that I couldn't be accused of actual murder, both because of the IRA and because of my mitigatingly young age. Weird how I felt like the only person who cared about me was the guy who was literally paid not to care either way. So I've made it to the location where Flora is hanging out, let's see what she has to say. Didn't think you were coming. Okay, let's talk. About this job, destroying the greenhouses. The UFLL is doing the right thing for once. For the wrong reasons, of course. Do you know where the chemical dump is? Over by the rail spur? There's a small tank over there. Defoliant. Think you could get it for me? Deliver it to me at the airstrip south of here. I'll spray it from a plane while you're at the greenhouse. The chemicals will destroy the underbrush, then the soldiers won't have anywhere to hide. And then when everything dies, maybe then people will notice. For months I've been flying for this company, dropping their pesticide. I tell people how bad they are. They won't listen. Maybe now they will. I'll call you from the air, make sure you're alright. I need the tank at the chemical dump. Be sure not to get any on your skin. So it seems Flora has quite an interesting plan. We're both going to prove the deadliness of pesticides by taking out all of the area around the greenhouse and destroying all of the plant life. And it seems that she's hoping this will lead to people putting more pressure on these agro businesses not to use them. And at the same time, by taking out all of the plants in the area, it's going to stop any enemies that I encounter while I'm there from having cover, which means it's going to make my mission for the UFLL go a bit easier as I go in to try and take out the pumps they use for irrigation. So first I need to get this pesticide from the chemical plant, which luckily is right around the corner from where Flora was hanging out. There's a little pass through the mountains that I can use to get in without having to use the road, so hopefully that will reduce the chance of me being spotted. However, I've already been spotted by a sniper who is somewhere behind me. At this point I don't know where they are, but I can hear shots occasionally flying past and sometimes bouncing off the back of the car. So I decided I'd try and take him out with my own rifle. I uh, <laughs> hear more shots going very close to me. I look very carefully, and I'm just about able to spot the guy in the distance. And he's down. So we've secured our rear flank. Now it's time to move up into the chemical plant. This sniper rifle is in a bit of disrepair, so I don't really want to use it because it could jam, just like it did uh, right at the end of the last episode in a really inconvenient situation. So now I can just about see the chemical plant, we've got some vehicles, various train carriages. I can see a couple of guys running around in the distance, they look kind of panicked, so I think they probably heard that sniper rifle round I just fired, but I don't think they know where it came from, because they don't look like they're coming this way, in fact now they've disappeared, so perhaps they've gone inside. So I decided that I simply need to make a careful advance on this chemical plant, from where I am I don't see any hostiles, of course I do know there are at least two, so I need to be careful. It's possible I can get in and steal this uh, chemical pesticide without them even seeing me. There's this shipping crate in front of me which gives me good cover from the building so I can get relatively close with, uh, without them having a chance to see me approach. Now a little closer, I still can't see any more hostiles. So I thought it's probably safe to get even closer. I'm going to move over to this little ramp. This here is my dart rifle, which I recently purchased. The dart rifle puts enemies to sleep with a powerful tranquilizer, and more importantly, it uh, basically neutralizes them quietly. So they'll go down, and the enemy won't know where you fired from, but they will know you're there, because the guy goes down screaming usually. <laughs> so they'll know something's wrong, but they'll have no idea where you are. So this is a good weapon for making a silent approach. Now as I approached the building I spotted someone ducking in the bushes just looking up at the cliffs there so I utilized my silent rifle to take him out so the enemy I think they already knew I was here but now they definitely know I was here I'm here sorry so I need to be more careful 
They have no idea where I am, of course, though, thanks to the silence. So I'm still free to wander about in this area, and it's unlikely they'll rush over thinking I'm here all of a sudden. So I'm guessing the chemicals are somewhere inside this building by the looks of it on the map. So I'm going to peek around the corner and just have to see what I can see. Oh, too late. <laughs> Some guy, I guess, decided to come investigate the area. Comes out and I'm forced to go loud, taking out barrels and firing my pistol. So the enemy definitely know I'm here and they almost definitely know I'm over in this direction. There's two more enemies downrange there. I think there's a third and a fourth as well, but I'm too far away to hit them with this pistol. I could whip out my sniper rifle, but as I said, I'm not really willing to use it. So I decided instead I'm going to move in closer and uh, try and flank them here, getting around this sheet metal wall. But there was a hole in it and a gap here, so they spotted me approaching. I'm firing wildly. I hoped that barrel would explode, but it didn't. One guy runs out. I think he didn't even know where I was, and I sneakily shoot him in the back. Quite dishonorable. I'm able to sneak up on the flanks of where I saw those enemies. There's the other one. I take him out. There's more fire coming over from the west. More guys coming down from where the uh, railways are. Again, I'm too far away to really be effective with this pistol, so I wasn't 100% sure what to do. It's quite difficult for me to advance, so I decided I'll try out the sniper rifle. It looked like someone was coming around this building. I decided to just take the building out in case any of them were hiding inside. That's also going to blow up that ammo cache, and I take some damage myself from the shockwave coming off that explosion, quite inconvenient. The enemy seems to be charging me, I'm able to take him out with my pistol. He was quite inaccurate, he had a good chance to shoot me there, but he missed. Another guy appears, <laughs> goes behind this corrugated wall. I couldn't tell where he was, and he assumably can't tell where I am, because he's not firing. So I'm going to sneak around, there he is, finish him off. So that was everyone by the looks of things, and so now I'm free to go and look for this pesticide, and there it is, just sitting on the table. Not a particularly secure location to keep your pesticide, but I guess take that up with the militia. So now I just need to get the pesticide to Flora. She's over at an airfield to the south, not too far away, but just before I do that, I noticed there was a uh, case of diamonds on top of this truck, and I wanted to get it. Let's see what Flora has to say just before that. If you've got that kind of poison, come on out to the airstrip. I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> a fine idea, so I'm going to grab the diamond and then make my way over to Flora. So I wasn't going down for murder, but still they managed to get me on everything else. And the fact I spent half of my chances to speak just raging against the world for forcing me into this spot didn't really help. It was true that I didn't consider any of the things I was being accused of as being my fault. As far as I was concerned, I was forced into it all, unable to do anything because I had no choices. Unfortunately, the jury didn't think so. They didn't think so strongly about maintaining personal honour at any cost. And from then on, neither did I. In the end, the judge told me and a bunch of happy onlookers in the gallery that I was to be sent to the maze for a few years to straighten me out. A maximum security prison filled with murderers and captured IRA operatives. Luckily, the prison officers didn't feel like sending a teenager to lodge with the hardcore long-timers, so they put me in the casual wing, which in terms of your prison reputation is a lot like sitting at the kids' table at a dinner party. The place was still a dump, and I was still the youngest guy there. At first, the older guys seemed confused as to why some scrawny kid was in the maze, and maybe they even pitied me, but I wouldn't let them talk to me. I wasn't in the market for prison allegiances, mainly because I was still raging, not only at Fergal, but at myself for having trusted him. I didn't feel like trusting anyone after that, not for a very, very long time. So it looks like Flora's in this hut at the airfield, let's give her the pesticide. So small, let me have it. Perfecto. I'm going to take it up right away. You should go to the greenhouses. Now is the perfect time. So it's time for the plan to all come together, I guess. I'm going to steal this ammunition that Flora had lying around in here. Now I'm going to head over to the greenhouses and start thinking about my other mission to take out the irrigation pumps. And hopefully Flora's going to help me out on the way. It's a fairly long journey, so I better get going. All that rage was going to come in useful as the long hours doing nothing passed a little faster when you had revenge to plan. When I wasn't in the cell, I talked a little with some of the other IRA guys there, but I pissed them off royally with my hostile attitude. Don't get me wrong, I still believed in the Republican cause and all that, but I absolutely hated the IRA, making me a rare third player in the war that resulted in me being alienated by just about everybody. I did notice this, and after a few weeks I was toning it down. 
Instead, I came at the IRA guys with some constructive criticism. I started telling them how the IRA needed to go official and be more like the British, setting up a structured system that didn't rely on the dodgy cells. A couple of them agreed until people started to explain how open warfare would bring a global empire's wrath to Ireland and probably get everyone killed or enslaved. Unfortunately, I did not appreciate that level of strategic thought and proceeded to label those dissenters as cowards. Operation Reconciliation was a failure. Still, I genuinely held those beliefs, and the long hours thinking about them made me more and more sure that we needed a way to internally punish betrayals like Fergal's. Little did I know there would come a day when I had a chance to actually create an army for myself to test out my ideas, but at the moment I had no chances in life whatsoever. I was only meant to be there for a few years, but the other IRA guys said they had been re-arrested and convicted of something else the second they left, so I wasn't all that hopeful. The realisation that I was in deep shit phased in and out for a couple of months, until finally I had to accept it. No matter how I looked at what I'd done, the end result was that I fucked up, possibly for life. Thinking like that started to erode my warrior's attitude. I started thinking about Garrison more and more. It became hard to ignore the fact that I just wanted to get back there and start things over. I accepted that joining the IRA was a bad idea and started scolding and hating myself for those decisions. I never really recalled that at the time I had just been fulfilling my dreams. As I started getting more quiet and withdrawn, there was one guy there who seemed to agree with me and agree that I was getting a shitty deal. As my luck would have it, he was one of the prison's wardens, a pretty old guy by the name of Pat. Pat seemed to appreciate the situation I was in. I suspect he probably went through something similar himself at some point. He kind of understood how a young guy like me just wanted a second chance at it all, not to have a life ruined over a few stupid mistakes. Pat never seemed to have much influence with the rest of the wardens, so I wasn't hoping for him to get me out, but at least it was someone who didn't look upon me with disdain or contempt. Through him I got some books to pass the time, a few tomes on history that I devoured as quickly as my shitty reading skills would allow. Stories of historic empires and their great struggles, including the British, became my sanctuary from the misery of real life. The end result of the reading was the overwhelming feeling that big nations were both the best and worst parts of humanity. Best for those reaping in the profits, and worst for those who pointed out this unfairness. I was turning into something of an anarchist, but Pat seemed to carefully avoid giving me books that would stoke that flame after I expressed my thoughts on these matters. So I had settled into a new and slightly more acceptable routine that cycled on for a few months. Then there came a week where any sense of confidence or satisfaction I'd scraped together seemed to disappear and I fell back into a depressed lump, not sure if I wanted power, peace, friends or war. During that week, Pat showed up to give me some new reading material, saw that I was relapsing into a rage, and I guess he decided he was going to have to pull some strings if I was going to be saved from myself. This old man I barely knew decided to sit down and give me some words that would jumpstart my life for better or for worse. So now I am approaching the greenhouses. I found this sneaky route where I can come through this forested cliffy area to get in there unseen. There was also a, a suitcase with diamonds and a whole bunch of ammunition sitting around there as well. Quite handy. So now I just have to climb over this little mudslide here and there's a sneaky path that's going to go right into the area with the greenhouses. It's also on a little raised area which gives me nice visibility. The problem is that as soon as I arrive I get my monocular out and see that there's a sniper looking right at me. So it seems I arrived at the imperfect time when he was actually looking at this entrance. So I'm going to use my silent rifle to take him out but the enemy already got some shots off and I think they probably already know at least that I'm up here somewhere. So it's not going <laughs> amazingly well. I'd hope to get in a little bit more stealthily and see if I could just take out the pumps without them noticing. But at least now I have this good position to look for any more enemies who might be coming for me. For the moment I can't see anyone so I'm going to move forward. Suddenly I see someone coming right up the path towards me and I take him out as well. I've only got one dart left so I can only do one more silent kill. Though at this point silent kills are getting less and less valuable because I think they are working out that I am just up here. So I come onto this little cliff. 
and uh, see if I can see anyone over the side. I start hearing gunfire coming from somewhere, so I'm going to go loud and switch to my pistol. So I'm going to see where these guys are. I had a feeling they were somewhere off to my right, but then I see them emerge right in front of me, and I take them out. Now that definitely attracted some attention, so I need to stay on the lookout. I can see one more guy in the distance who I took out with my last dart. So now if I want to take guys out of range, I'm going to have to use my little unreliable sniper rifle. Hopefully that'll be okay. For now, it looks like it's safe to advance. The enemy aren't going to come from behind me. And I think I've killed everyone in front of me. I do spot someone scrambling through the undergrowth. I think that might have been someone I shot who didn't actually die and was just wounded and was trying to escape. But I've taken him out now. So now I can make my advance towards these greenhouses. I spot someone in the distance while I'm reloading. So I'm going to quickly wait, take him out. Luckily he didn't move. So I've got a nice clear shot with my sniper rifle. So now I can move in. I think the pumps are somewhere at the other end of the greenhouses. So I need to get to the other end. But of course this could be dangerous because there could be guys hanging around in there. I fired at the glass there because I saw a silhouette behind it. There's an, a tower at the other end of the greenhouses and I could see someone there. Unfortunately it looked like the glass was going to stop my shot. So I decided to come up onto this tower to see if I could spot the other guy from here. I can't really see him, but uh, <laughs> I do start taking fire from below. It seems standing on the tower is a good way to make a target of myself. Lucky that guy was really inaccurate, and the wooden planks around the edge of the tower absorb some of the fire. So I take him out, uh, finishing him off with a second shot there. So I can't see the guy in the distance, so I'm probably going to have to just advance, because if I just sit here, the enemy are just going to start surrounding me. Luckily, I guess there aren't too many enemies here. It's not a very intense battle going on right now. So there's probably only a few of them skulking around somewhere. So it's not too dangerous. As I advance, someone starts firing wildly. I don't think that guy even knew where I was. He was just firing blindly. Take him out with ease. Missed the second guy who was running in behind him. So now I need to take care of this guy. I thought he might be flanking around this side of the greenhouse. But it looked like he wasn't. So it's possible he's just gone to ground up at the other end. But actually no. <laughs> He'd advanced all the way down whilst I was looking around for him. So I had to do a close range snipe. Someone comes in on my rear. I'm going to fire at them with my pistol. The pistol jams at a very inconvenient time. I managed to unjam it and finish him off. Before he can blast me at point blank range with that shotgun. Which would have been very deadly. It's possible he would have killed me in one hit if he'd got off a shot there so it looks like i've taken out most of the guards now i decide to throw a petrol bomb to start a fire that will just distract anyone who's looking around for me hopefully they'll be uh, so enticed by that fire that they won't notice me sneaking into the greenhouse up here and looking for the pumps so i knew the pump was somewhere at the end of the greenhouse i could spot someone in the distance actually there's someone running around back where i just was so perhaps the petrol bomb did entice someone to investigate that area I was a bit worried that he might come and find me, but I wasn't actually sure what he was doing. So I decided I'd just leave him be for now and uh, come and look at the pump. This is it, this big red pump here. So I need a way to destroy it. I do have my grenades, so I can use those to damage it. And hopefully that'll take out it entirely. So I throw a grenade very dodgily close to myself, sprint out. The grenade goes off and the pump is destroyed. Good news. So let's see what Flora has to say on the phone. You did it, didn't you? I can see it from here. So Flora's coming down to destroy the whole area with pesticides and I probably need to get out the way otherwise things are going to get a little bit stingy. I can hear the plane but I have no idea where it's coming from. Finally I spot it coming in, dropping its pesticides. It seems to be completely destroying the local atmosphere so I'm just going to hide over here. I don't seem to be taking health damage or anything so I think I'm okay. Spot an enemy running through the uh, dying plants. He was probably burning alive in those pesticides. So I put him out of his misery with a well-placed sniper shot. So as Flora promised, the plants are all gone. It's not exactly a great tactical advantage because I already took out half the guys. I guess if I'd come into the greenhouses from this side and taken out the pumps earlier, that would have been the way I should have done it. So <laughs> if you heard that on the phone there, Flora got shot down very shortly after escaping the airspace over the greenhouse. Uh, she's crashed just south of the greenhouse. Actually, it looks like it's uh, around the area where I came in. So I need to rush over there and uh, try and get her out alive. I assume there's someone who shot her down who's still hunting her. So I need to get over there pretty quickly. Luckily, there's a vehicle right here I can use, and there's a road that seems to go vaguely around to where Flora's crashed on the map, so I'm going to quickly follow it and get over there. Once I get away from the greenhouses, the atmosphere seems to clear again, so the pesticide only affected that area, so that's good news. So now let's smash down to where Flora's crashed and see who's attacking her. 
At first I don't see anyone, but then I hear gunfire. I'm guessing it's the APR. I get out of my car and they're right in front of me. I don't know why they weren't shooting me already. Flora's somewhere behind me shouting at me. She's uh, hidden behind this little log here. I think she had pretty good cover. She was alright by the looks of things. So I think she was a little bit too panicked on the phone. So we have saved Flora, we've destroyed the greenhouses, and hopefully we've made Flora's point about pesticides being pretty deadly. They did seem pretty deadly to me, they annihilated that area in just a couple of seconds. So, looks like overall everything was a success, uh, with the one problem being that Flora has lost her plane, as we can see here. Um, but I think this plane actually belonged to the agro business who we just ruined the assets of, so perhaps it's uh, quite poetic that the plane should go down as well. I guess that's a good resignation for Flora. So, mission accomplished for Frank. So now we're back in Parla on the evening of the same day and I've come here because I'm out of malaria medication and the longer I go without it the more sick I'm going to get so I need to acquire some more. And of course the reverend at the church told me that if I ever needed more medication I'm to come to him. So I'm here to visit the church and see if he can sort me out a little bit more meds. Normally I won't show you this because you have to do this lots of times throughout the game. I thought the first time I need to restore my meds I'll just show you how it works. I know why you're here. We have no medicine now. You must speak to a man I know a half a mile south of Makuba Shanti town. An undertaker. You'll find his place on your map. A man with a good soul will not be denied. But a good faith gesture feeds that soul. Deliver these transit letters and you'll be assured your medicine. So basically the deal is, this reverend's got some refugees somewhere out in the desert and I need to go and save them by rescuing them from anyone who's holding them captive and giving them these passports so that they can leave the country safely. So I need to head over to the site on my map, which is where they're being held, quite far away, and see if I can give these guys their ticket out of South Mali. Pat had worked out that I was conflicted and essentially told me to cool off and lower my expectations. I wanted everything to go right again, but he told me that one man could not achieve anything. He told me I couldn't be the man who won the revolution, restored the republic, or in fact he went on to say, do anything of note whatsoever. Normal people were bound to do normal things and it was part of growing up to come to appreciate that. If that's true, then I guess I still had some growing up to do when I stepped onto the plane to South Mali. Anyway, after Pat's lecture, I said pretty much nothing, not really willing to let Pat's downbeat message sink in. Pat quietly replaced my books while I stared at my favourite spot on the floor. Then he said that he knew I wanted to return home to Garrison. If that was the height of his intuition, it's no wonder he never became a proper police officer. But I shouldn't be insulting this guy because he actually had a plan to get me out. So I've located the hut where these refugees are hanging out and I spotted a bunch of armed militia outside. So already I know I'm going to have to fight my way through them. I've taken out one already using my silent rifle but it seems it wasn't silent enough because they know where I am. Possibly because of all the fights I had to go through on the road just to get here. So I'm going to pull out my loud sniper rifle. I thought there was a guy behind that corrugated metal sheet so I fired at it just on the off chance that I managed to hit him. I wanted to come up the slope here because that would have been my favourite way to attack. But instead, it, I'm going to have to go around to the road because I can't climb up here properly. Looks like the guys are coming out to meet me though, taking out one quite easily with the sniper rifle <laughs> and taking out the second one very difficultly with the pistol, eventually getting him after wasting a whole clip. Still, I, I doubt there's that many more guys guarding these couple of refugees. They're not of much value to the militia, so I'm going to sneak my way up. I do see one more guy sitting in the corner. I can't really tell if he's militia at first, but when he turns around and reveals a gun, I take him out. It tells me I've unlocked an underground location, so I know I've secured the area. So I'm going to head inside the house and supply these guys with the passports that they need. I saw what you did. Thank you. And you have passports. Our friends in back will be happy to see you. Come, come in. You are sick. We help you. We have medicine. You have papers? You'll be better now. We'll be better. We help each other, yes? So, with a little good deed, I've got myself some medicine. Frank is now good to continue for the next few days of his penance. <laughs>